the Joe Rogan experience. Sure. Um, so I think I don't think they want to form a relationship with us. I think they're coming and going like taxis, and they have been since the beginning of the existence of, of life on this planet or the existence of this planet. Do you think they engineered human beings? Well, that Mission to Mars movie is one of NASA employees' favorite movies. I think maybe they might Mission have. Mission to Mars movies? That's a uh, Mission to Mars, Tim Robbins, really good picture. It's a yeah. doc. It's not it's a, a doc. It's a feature. It's a feature, it's a feature yeah. Mission to Mars. Yeah. yeah what is it neat. about? It's about the mission to Mars and them discovering there was a civilization there and that perhaps we were helped along in our development. Yeah. What year was this around? Uh, I'm not sure. Mission 2000. to Mars. Really? Really uh, good. Oh, I remember. It was like a horror movie. Here's the uh, here's the uh, uh, Marilyn yes, Monroe. Yes, I saw that movie. Here's Marilyn the cover Monroe. with Marilyn Monroe. Uh, there's a case for interplanetary saucers that was in Life magazine. Okay, I remember this movie now. Yeah. Was that a good movie? It was. It was yeah. really good. In the end, Tim Robbins kind of. There's been a few space. astronauts that got really deep into UFOs, right? Uh, Edgar Mitchell. Edgar uh, Mitchell yeah. was one of them. Well, I have an interesting story for you, and this is of course totally anecdotal, Might and it's part of drink. the it's part of the lore, and. Um, May I, we have, you want another drink? Hell yeah. Okay, so. One drink? Oh, we. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. I, I do believe that we actually rent to the moon. I, I, I don't believe that, um, I don't believe uh, that uh, that's a fake uh, experience. I, you know, I'm saying people say, oh, well, it was black and the dust didn't, you know, the dust uh, flew up and it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Uh, crystal head vodka, cleanest vodka on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I believe the one. And, 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 and you know, I've, I've Buzz Aldrin, a good friend of mine, love as a good friend of everybody's, but I love Buzz. And um, so they go to the moon. And I, I love that story about there was only 17 seconds of fuel left when they when they landed. And, mm. and then he had to kind of hop over some rocks to get there, you know. Um, so there's a story that Neil Armstrong was at a conference in in uh, in France in a hotel room and one and there was a woman there who had been previously head of MI6 and she was a part of this cocktail party and she overheard a conversation between Neil Armstrong and another gentleman who was in the intelligence service and the guy was asking him about the moon landing and Neil said you know there was a frequency that we switched to to talk about other things that were happening at that time and the guy said, what do you mean? He said, when we landed there on the rim of the crater nearby, he said, there were several ships and they were large and menacing. What's a menacing ship? M uh, Shaped large. like one of your bottles of skulls? Well, no, that, no, this is as a happy menacing. skull. No, the Coneheads starship. Remember yeah, the Coneheads yeah, starship? If, uh, I do remember that. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a total, <laughs> I mean, but I think, you know, if that, if you deal arm, if that's true, you know, well, you well, know, he only that, said that one time in French. Maybe they, we, yeah, maybe their you know, the woman sucked. again, the woman, do you want this? Oh, I might as well have it straight, right? Uh, the woman, the woman was with MI6 purportedly. That's kind of a, a neat story, you know. I don't know. Of course, it's a neat story. Edgar Mitchell yeah. said that he saw something out there too, right? Uh, Edgar Mitchell did, and, yeah, and he, uh, and, he uh, was a he's he's passed Condon. away. He's passed yeah. away since, right? Yeah. Edgar yeah. No, there were, he was a firm believer. And, the, and then the, the STS 1979 STS space shuttle footage. You've seen that STS 1979 uh, tether, uh, satellite tether break. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. The tether broke off. It was a mile long, and they were supposed to spin off a satellite. It was a mile long, and, they, and it broke. So mm -hmm. the tether is a mile long. But in the back of the tether, you see these O lifesaver-shaped rings going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, David Serrata says that's a species that was trying to help the planet and they were bringing giant water bags and giant, giant water vessels to heal our ozone layer. And it was the STS 1979 <laughs> space shuttle uh, tether. Water and heals ozone layers? Uh, water, uh, these, uh, wa wa water, yeah, water, water. It's a big, big, massive, massive dumps of water. These were supposed to be these O-shaped Lifesaver shaped UFO uh, figures. And then what he did was he compared them against the length of the tether, which was a mile long, and said these things would have had to have been, you know, quite large. Now that's David Serrata. Mm. You should have him on. He's a, he's a brilliant ufologist and theorist. Mm. And uh, STS uh, Space Shuttle 1979. You got and that? then Lonnie Zamora, you should also check, and Herb Shermer, S C H I uh, I R M A R, and Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal, you know. This is uh, just a piece yeah. of paper, but there's a video footage. Uh, there you go. Evidence rex and plasmas in the thermosphere. There we go. There. <laughs> Ten separate NASA space shuttle missions over 200 miles above the Earth within the, the thermosphere. The structures appear to be self-illuminated. 
may be several meters or kilometers in size and have four distinct morphologies. What is this? What's the title of this? Who's this from? Um, Emeritus Brain Research Laboratory, Northern California, Cosmology.com. I've never seen that. That's pretty neat. I don't know. I just stumbled across it. It may be Ron bullshit. Ron Joseph, but... PhD, Center for Cosmology, Silicon Valley, California. Huh. The, no, see if you can find the, But there is video There footage. is video. The tether. Uh... The video is weird. And someone described it as ice crystals, and they said that the perspective is what's uh, screwing everybody mm -hmm. up, as if the ice crystals are between us and the cable, I, but it makes it look like they're enormous, mm -hmm. but they're actually quite small. I think, I think at this point we can accept that that, that these ships are real, that they're advanced. Can they're, we? Yes, we can. I think we can accept that. There's just so many, so so much footage, so many reports. Ted Phillips has trace evidence. So many landing sites. So many. I, I think we accept they're real. I think we accept these beings are real. They're many different species. Some are benevolent to us. Some are malevolent. What we have to get past is, okay, now that we know that, how will that help human transformation? Now, John Mack, at this session I was at at the Fifth Avenue Medical Institute. A woman got up and she said, I was a socialite in Massachusetts. I, all I cared about was money and spending money and where I could go and spend money and, and buying things. And one afternoon I was in my garden and an orange orb came into the garden and a, and a figure got out and lectured me. You have so much power. Just like the guy in the sailboat, you can make this planet a better place. Your obligation now is to use your power and your wealth to make this planet a better uh, place. And she is now one of the leading environmentalists on the planet. She devotes her money and time to this. What's her name? I don't know her name. I don't remember her name. Mm. But Jan Harzan, I, Jan Harzan, I do know his name. He's head of MUFON. And why is Jan Harzan, an IBM, ex-IBM mainframe engineer, head of MUFON? Because when he was a boy... In Marin County, California, he and his brother were left for the weekend. He's a 10 and 12-year-old bro uh, brother, and he was 10. An orange orb dropped into his backyard, and two beings got out and played with them for several hours, and then he came back the next day. And Jan said, I, I have to go into science. i got to know what that was. That wasn't a helicopter. That wasn't a... Have you had Jan mm. on? Have you had the, no, yeah, no? Yeah, I have Jan on, and you should have. Uh, okay. You should have Jan on. You should have Beverly Trout on. She's the uh, um, she's the uh, Midwestern one of the directors for Mid the Midwest. Sam Maranto, the expert on the Tinley Park cases, which that is so great. But I want to just point the out that Dan Aykroyd has no notes in front of him. These notes are these words are just flying out of his head. These names are deeply story. ingrained the, the, in his the, memory. The Tinley Park. I mean, the Delta's parking above your family barbecue. You know, mm. so it's entertaining. We got to get past that they exist and get to the point. Though, how do we we benefit our planet. How do we make this planet better? How do we take these warnings? The day the Earth stood still, one of the greatest UFO movies ever. Oh yeah. He comes down and he says, you know, these nuclear toys you're playing with, we don't, we don't like that, you know. So I think that there's some intervention. Uh, Klaatu Barada Niktu. Klaatu Barada Niktu. Patricia Neal and that show. What a great movie, man. <laughs> that's that's, that's an inaugural movie. Yeah. What year know. was that? Have that's you shown the your 50s, children that right? movie yet? You should. No, not yet. You should show I your should. girls. Yeah. That was in the 50s. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, and because it really took the real science of what was going on, and 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 it took all of the stories that were reported in, in Bruce's book here. Mm. and kind of distilled them into, you know, into a theory of what might be happening. Mm. <laughs>